Hi, I'm Brendan Gordon, a Staff Technical Marketing Architect with the Cloud Management Business Unit. I'd like to show you this new dashboard that I've created. This dashboard is designed to show you the potential return on investment for using vRealize Operations using the data from vRealize Operations. What I've done here is taken all of the cost data that's available in vRealize Operations and consolidated it into a single dashboard. I've also taken a few other pieces uh, from custom dashboards that I've created and consolidated them in this dashboard as well. So I'd like to take a, just a couple of minutes to talk you through what I have created here. Um, so this first section is showing the total cost of ownership. So this is how much it costs for the environment on a uh, per month basis. Then I have the total cost of ownership with potential savings and optimization opportunities. What this is showing is, uh, is this is taking the total cost of ownership and applying all the potential savings that have been identi identified by vRails operations, uh, subtracting those, and then the um, optimization opportunities. So these are things that can be done to make the environment perform a little better, adding the, the additional cost for that back in. So in the end, if you do all of the recommendations that are available in vRealize Operations, this is basically what you could potentially um, cost per month for your infrastructure. Um, and also have this um, broken down for the potential savings um, by type. So idle VMs, uh, powered off VMs, VM snapshots, and orphan disks. So all four of these are native so if you go to the Reclaim page within Virulous Operations, you can see all of these individual costs, savings shown there. Uh, the next one here is the oversized virtual machines. So this is one that is using a custom dashboard that I created. Uh, it's for uh, right sizing. And this uses the right sizing recommendations from Virulous Operations and then calculates what the the potential capacity reclamation would be by doing right sizing and then converting that capacity into a, a cost. So this is saying, if I right size all the virtual machines in my environment, how much money I can save by doing that. And then the next one is reclaimable hosts. So this is another custom dashboard that I've created. Uh, so what this one is doing is using the capacity projections from VRLS operations. So it's looking at a cluster and it's you know, looking at the historical utilization and then projecting out what the utilization will be 150 days in the future by default. Um, so it knows, you know, basically has an idea of what the utilization of the cluster will be 150 days in the future. Then it adds on the resources needed for admission control, however you have configured HA. And then it says, okay, this is the total recommended capacity of that particular cluster. And then I look at the difference between the resources in the cluster and um, and the, the total recommended capacity. And then I, I figure out based on the average size of the host, how many hosts I can reclaim from that cluster. And then I convert the, that um, number of hosts into the cost. So what this is saying is I could potentially reclaim um, you know, a certain number of hosts from my environment. And then if I reclaim all of those hosts, this is how much money I can save uh, by doing that. So the idea here is not necessarily to um, to like retire the host or you know to get rid of them. It's more about you know, if you need capacity in another location, you can take uh, clusters or take the hosts out of the cluster, put them in a different cluster to provide capacity, and in essence, you're deferring purchase of new hosts. So you know this is um, it'll eventually turn into savings um, by you not needing to buy new hosts as soon. And then total potential savings is just the sum of all of these uh, potential savings opportunities. Um, and then the last one there is the op optimization opportunities. So this is the cost. Again, this is coming from that right sizing uh, dashboard that I've created. And this is looking at it from undersized virtual machines. So it's saying if I right size all of my undersized virtual machines, the cost will, will increase by this amount. Um, and then that's where I, I take all these and add them up and to figure out what that uh, the, the difference is between the total cost of ownership with all of these optimizations added on. Um, and that's what I'm showing in the chart there is you can see the difference between the two. And the idea is those hopefully will start to converge um, and become closer as, as you become more and more efficient in your environment at managing the environment. 
And then the uh, also have a chart there on the on the bottom showing the potential savings opportunities in percentage. So this kind of gives you an idea from a, from a percentage perspective how that changes over time. Probably a little bit easier to to talk in um, you know, in a percentage than looking at you know, the comparison between two large numbers. This section here is, called, is showing the average cost per virtual machine. So this is taking the total cost of ownership for the environment um, and dividing it by the number of virtual machines that have been provisioned. So this kind of gives you an idea of how efficient you're doing from a cost perspective. So the the idea is, you know, what, what you'll see is when you add new capacity, you'll see the cost per VM go up because you have capacity that's you know, not being used right now. And then as you start consuming that capacity, you'll see the cost per VM go down. But the idea is over time, you'll see the average cost per VM to decrease over time. Okay, this, this next section, I've got a few pieces here that are um, taking the total cost of ownership and breaking them down through different perspectives. So this first one here is looking at it from a cost driver perspective. So this is saying how much of my costs are, are attributed to server hardware that is owned, server hardware that's leased, uh, hosts, OS licenses, maintenance facilities, server lab labor, network, storage, and direct costs for the VMs. And with this breakdown, you can see which which pieces contribute the most to the cost of your infrastructure. This particular example, you can see the storage is the, the largest piece, but it might be different in, in your environment. Um, these cost drivers, uh, by default, use the cost reference database that comes with VRLS operations, but you can go into the cost drivers and modify them to, uh, to show your actual costs. I definitely encourage you to do that um, in your environment to get the you know, make the costs much more meaningful for uh, for your environment. The next section here is looking at the cost of capacity used versus remaining. So this is saying, you know, of the of the capacity that I'm using for all the VMs that I provision, that I, and, you know, the resources that those VMs are using, it costs this much, and then whatever capacity is left to run more virtual machines, it's showing the cost of that. Uh, so you, can, you get an idea of how much, of, how much of the cost is attributed to you know, workloads you actually have now and how much of the cost is associated to capacity you have to run more workloads. And then I have also the, the number of VMs that can run in the environment, um, you know, the additional number of additional VMs you can fit within the environment. So this is uh, saying, saying how many VMs I can fit in that capacity remaining to kind of give you an idea of, you know, of uh, what it looks like from your the remaining capacity, both from a cost perspective and from the number of VMs. This next section is again taking the total cost of ownership and breaking it down by data center. So you may have some data centers that are more expensive than others. Maybe you have primary data centers and then more um, like branch offices and things like that. So it, it helps you see where the costs are going from a data center perspective. Um, you know, you may have some outliers that might be interesting. Um, you know, it may, you know, like one data center be more expensive than the other. You know, it may be worth looking into why that is uh, happening. So continuing on, this next section here is on the server hardware depreciation. So this is showing the the purchase cost of the servers, how much of the server's cost has been depreciated, how much is left to depreciate. And then how many servers have been uh, fully depreciated? So the reason um, you know, this is important is you know, as servers age, um, you know, they, they tend to not be able to run as many virtual machines as newer servers. They start to break down more often. Um, you know, they need more maintenance, um, et cetera. So the, the idea is you know, by the time a server is fully depreciated, most likely you would want to replace it with newer hardware that can run more virtual machines. Um, so this helps you see that from uh, you know from a depreciation perspective like the age of the servers you know when you know when you're starting to have um, you know potential issues from from the server age and stuff like that so um that's the idea with this dashboard or this particular section sorry and this next section here is showing the cost uh the cost savings breakdown so this is actually taking the same cost savings that i mentioned at the top uh, this is showing the same numbers, but we now have a chart here that shows the individual cost savings um, and how they relate to each other and how they change over time. So this is where you can track how you're doing on um, all these potential savings um, throughout uh, you know, throughout time. 
And the idea is hopefully these will start to decrease as you start taking more actions on the recommendations. And then we also have uh, here the, the reclaimable capacity and the allocation changes for virtual machines to give you an idea of how much resources um, you could potentially uh, free up if you do all of these, um, these recommendations. And then this last section is the optimization opportunities. So right now this is showing the undersized virtual machines. So these are VMs that uh, could benefit from having additional resources allocated to them. So we can see this from a cost perspective and how the costs associated that uh, changes over time. And then the allocation changes that are needed to optimize these virtual machines. Thank you so much for your time. Please check the video description for a link to the companion blog post and links to download and install this dashboard in your environment. Thank you so much and have a great day.